Welcome back to Kedco on the Street. We're going to tell you now about another made in Kingston business that's thriving in our community. It's called Laser Depth Dynamics and joining me now is Paul Webster, the inventor, and Roger Bose, the president. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, Julie. So guys, tell me a little bit about your company and what it does. Well, we have a technology that is useful in the manufacturing industry, automotive, uh, jet engines, things like that. Uh, we help to make these devices uh, cheaper, faster, and, uh, and more effective. All right, so this is laser technology, and you developed it while you were studying physics, physics engineering at Queen's University. That's right. I, uh, I arrived at Queen's as an undergrad in 2002, um, spent four years here uh, finishing that degree, and then started a, a degree that eventually became my, uh, my PhD. And uh, while I was doing that work, I was researching a medical imaging technology that's useful for looking inside people's eyes. Mm -hmm. And uh, almost by chance, we decided to try and use the same approach to look inside uh, the interaction zone where lasers meet metal and uh, to see what the technology could see in that situation. It turned out to be a very good fit. Um, so now we're taking a technology that used to be used in, in people's eyes where you don't want strong lasers and now on pieces of metal where they have very, very strong lasers. And, and now we're, we're making welds uh, faster, we're making welds more accurate, and we're warning people of potential defects that might exist in, in any of these things. Now, Roger, how did you get involved in this? So I would uh, worked for another company in Kingston, ESG Solutions, for a number of years. Uh, was CEO there for a little while. Um, but I really like the startup game. So um, I, uh, I was in a Partech talking to John Malloy and looking for new opportunities for uh, startup technology companies because that's kind of my, where my experience lies. My background is actually electrical engineering. Um, but know quite a bit about business and uh, technology development. So John, you know, kind of put me on to, to laser depth at that time. It was still, the company wasn't actually formed yet. Paul was still finishing his PhD, but, um, you know, I liked the story. Uh, you know, I had a chance to meet Paul. I, I liked him. I thought he had a, a pretty clever idea. But I think the thing that I liked the most was that there seemed to be a lot of industry interest in the technology already, you know, before the company was even set up. So. You know, that's what got me excited um, about the idea. And uh, so at the start, it was, you know, just talking to Paul and trying to learn about the, uh, the industry and the potential for the technology. And, uh, you know, as I gained more and more knowledge about it, I got more and more interested in it and uh, to eventually uh, helping Paul start the company, I guess, October of, of this year, although the groundwork had really already been laid through the work that, that Paul had uh, had done in the lab already. Now, is this what you had envisioned when you, when you were going to school? Did you see yourself as an inventor or an entrepreneur? No, I had no idea. I, I saw an interesting problem that I wanted to solve. I, I liked to, to make things work, and it was only after making these things work for a, for a few years that we realized that they could have a really big impact out in the, in the wider world outside the university. Um, so, you know, when it came time to decide to, to start a, a company, I was weighing you know, jo a regular job versus uh, creating a company of my own. It was a tough choice at the time, but, you know, a year and a half in now, I, I know I made the right one. Um, this is a, a really fun ride, and uh, I think we're making a difference. So you really are a relatively new company on the stage, and you've been able to receive uh, some funding from uh, from uh, the government, the provincial government. Yeah, so at the end of uh, October, I won the Martin Walmsley Fellowship for Technical Entrepreneurship uh, from the Ontario Centers of Excellence. So this is their flagship um, individual uh, company uh, grant to try and get these kinds of tech startups uh, off the ground. And so uh, that was a, a definitely a big boost to get us out the door. But really, we've had a lot of financial help uh, on the basic research side from the National Sciences and Engineering Council of Canada, um, Ontario Centers of Excellence with other kinds of commercialization grants. And now that we're a company, this support is continuing out more stuff from OCE and uh, some other organizations such as, such as Partech. So really, the the programs that the government has in place for starting new technology ventures, um, we've really been able to take advantage of them and so far they're working really well for us. Now this technology has a lot of applications, but one is, is mainly in the manufacturing sector. So Roger, is this something that will help the manufacturing sector? Because in Ontario right now, it, it hasn't been doing so well, it's fl fledgling. <laughs> this is true, this is true. Um, our technology really helps a lot with industrial laser processes, 
These include things like welding, cutting, drilling, um, used in things like making cars or, or, or gearboxes, also um, a whole range of, of different industrial products. Um, now our company will probably sell internationally because these lasers are used all over the world in different applications and um, we have a, a patent, a license to a patent on the technology. So we really should have a competitive advantage, but hopefully along the way, we'll also help out the Ontario uh, industry as well. We're you know, obviously talking to Ontario manufacturers about implementing the technology, and that's a lot easier for us because it's, uh, it's close to home. So the sellable thing, one of the sellable things about your technology is that it is so precise, because if I'm not mistaken, lasers in the past have worked, but there's been a lot of waste and there's been a lot of labor to get to the final product. You've been able to streamline your operation so it cuts down on the cost and it's very precise. Yeah, so this, this kind of precision um, is, is necessary to have you know, an effective product in the end for anybody who's going to use a laser to manufacture something. Um, and right now, to make sure that they get the results they need, they have to be very conservative in the way that they plan their processes. So if you have a sensor that can tell you when you're getting out of range, uh, then you can make a correction at that moment for that particular process. Uh, this means that uh, for the rest of the time, you can take more risks. Uh, because on the odd chance that something goes wrong in the process, we can find it right away and fix it. But for the other 99% of the time the line is running, you're running it faster. Mm -hmm. So, and, and in manufacturing, that's the entire game. Faster, better, cheaper. If, if we can do any one of those, then, then we're winning. How thick is this laser? How big is this laser? <laughs> so, w the way it works is there's a, a process laser that actually does the welding or the cutting. That's not what we do. There's already manufacturers out there that make those products. We put a second beam, which isn't actually a, a laser beam itself, it's a measurement beam that we embed in, in the laser and we can measure the depth of the cutting or welding laser. And our, our beam spot size is about 50 microns, so it's really, really small. One human hair diameter, roughly. That's, really? Yeah. That's the diameter? Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it may be smaller than the actual cutting laser, but we're trying to, we just need to measure the depth so it can be, it can be really, really small. Okay. So why stay in Kingston? Why, why are you operating this business out of the Limestone City? Well, I, I love Kingston. Um, I, I moved here from Mississauga when I came here to university initially. And, and honestly, the, the quality of life that you can get in a town like Kingston, right here by the lake, um, without choking congestion like I've seen in, in some other cities, um, where I can walk everywhere that I, that I want to be, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to stay here. There's great facilities and in, even the cost of doing business here is significantly reduced compared to like, going right downtown in Toronto or something along those lines. So from the personal end, from the business end, I think it makes sense for a lot of reasons. Do you, sorry, go on, Roger. Yeah, I mean, I really think Kingston's a great place to, uh, to do startup companies. Um, I was involved in another one here and uh, with, with a lot of success. You know, as Paul said, it's easy. Things are relatively small, but the real drivers, in my opinion, are we have you know, universities here, Queens and RMC, we've got lots of, of well-qualified young people that we can hire. We've got the f resources from the university um, and relatively low cost of living. So it's a good combination. Uh, you know, I always think there should be more startup technology companies in Kingston. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm surprised sometimes that there aren't more, but I guess my solution to that is to get involved and try and help <laughs> grow some of these things. Um, but I think if we can kind of build a critical mass, and I know that's one of the things that Partech and, mm -hmm. and KEDCO and some of these organizations are working on, is if you can get that critical mass where you've got you know, access to capital, uh, young people that want to you know, take risks and, and, and get engaged in entrepreneurship, it really could become a, a hub for, for new technologies. And, you know, hopefully laser depth will be another success story coming out of Kingston. Now, Paul, do you see yourself as a role model for other engineers? You're, you're, you operate it around the Queen's campus, so, you know, academics are all around you. Do you, do you think they're looking up to you and seeing what, what they can do? Um, I, I think that I'm one possible path. Um, I've never really thought about myself as a, as a role model. I mean, I'm just trying really hard to, to, to be successful in what I'm trying right now. Um, but I'm sure that, uh, I, I'm hoping that my, my story will allow some people to envisage themselves in a different position. I, I didn't have someone that I had in my, in my view screen when I was a young engineer thinking, oh, I could be that entrepreneur. I, I, I thought I was going to get a, a job at a, um, a regular company mm -hmm. and do the nine to five thing. And 
I was I was happy with that idea at the time, but now that I've had a taste of something else, I I, I see there's another way, and, and hopefully some other people will see that too. So what's next for the company? So it's it's still a really early stages. We're getting out there and meeting potential customers. Uh, we've been running all over the world, going to trade shows and doing demonstrations for um, our partners. We're working closely with the laser manufacturers and system integrators because they already know the customers that need our technology. They're coming to us and saying, hey guys, we, we've heard about this technology. Do you think you could come visit us? So uh, Paul and I were just over in Germany uh, a couple of weeks ago um, working with one of the largest laser manufacturers in the world. They invited us to come over and they in fact paid our way to go over there to, uh, to demonstrate the technology to them. And, and we're hoping we'll see them again in uh, a couple of weeks at another um, show. But we're hoping that'll turn into a, a long-term relationship where they'll uh, either uh, distribute our products for us or perhaps integrate it with their products. But it's really, at this point, you know, we're still developing the technology, the hardware and the software, but at the same time, we realize that we have to get it out in front of customers, get feedback from them mm -hmm. um, on how it's going to work, and start to get it implemented in real-world applications. Now, if anyone wants more information on the company, where can they go? Uh, they can go to our website or uh, give, give us a call um, and talk to us about it. We're always uh, you know, interested in uh, new potential customers and new potential applications for the technology. All right. Roger Bowes, Paul Webster, thanks so much for being on the show. Best Thank of you. luck. Thanks a lot for having us. That is all the time we have for this edition of KEDCO on the Street. I'd also like to thank Richard Vanderwall, the CEO of Hydroclave, who was my guest a little bit earlier on the show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.